In this chapter, we are going to cover the dashboard layouts and take a look at the Salesforce Analytics mobile app. Let's start by going back and taking a look at the dashboard that we've designed. Now, the dashboard already has the widgets and the steps, etc., that we need. And it is recommended as a final step to create the layout so that we minimize the duplication of effort in case we wanted to add some charts that we forgot about. Uh, once we have the two layouts, we will need to do this manually in both layouts. So let's say we're done with our changes. We're almost ready to publish this, but we want to create a specific layout for a phone or a, a iPad or tablet device. The way you do it in edit mode, you go to default and create, uh, for example, go to manage layouts. Now, before I create another layout, I want to show you that even with the mobile app, what you're going to get is something similar to this. I did not create a specific layout. But if I go to my mobile app and tap on analytics, which is right here, and I've already logged in, so I've logged in as the user for this environment. And I went back to, like I said, dashboards, for example, and I tap on my opportunity dashboard. I already see the widgets kind of rearranged in a way that fit the uh, device. So although it's not strictly needed, but it is recommended to go and specifically create a layout for the uh, device in question. So if I switch now here and manage layouts, and let's say I want to create one for phone, just say phone layout, phone one, for example, it will try to generate and refit the icons or the, sorry, the charts, the widgets as the best it, it can see. So again, just simply the exercise will go over, let's say I don't want close date in the mobile layout. Um, I don't want all the links, maybe just one link. I can rearrange this, and that's why I mentioned this is good at the final stage. And so on, I can rearrange my icons, uh, sorry, my charts again, uh, anything I want. And once I'm done with this, I will go back to my mobile phone and double check that the layout fits my needs or looks the way I want it on my mobile device. So again, just keep in mind that I have deleted some on, on the top right here. Um, if I go back to the first layout, the, these are still here, the close date's still here, the other links. So let me save this in preview mode. There you go, this is the desktop layout. And if I go to my phone, and I need to refresh this, so you can just pull down. Let me close this and refresh it actually this way. Now if I hit on Opportunity Dashboard, I see the updated, as you can see, there's only one link, there's no close date, and there are the rest of the widgets. Obviously, I need to do some more work on the spacing, but I have everything that I need on this from this dashboard on my mobile device. And actually, you can see all industries from the binding exercise that's going to be down the um, down few chapters uh, in this series. Now, this is where self-exploration is again important. Notice that I can actually tap on the polar gauge and I see, by the way, set notifications. This is where I can actually set the notification on my mobile device without going back to my desktop. I can actually expand. If I tap expand, now I'm in self-explorations. I'm not limited to the number I'm seeing. I can actually click on view, change back to bar, allows me to go back to build which is that wrench icon right there. This is the icon I'm talking about. And I can change now the bar by even type. I can change the metric, add another one. For example, sorry, this is, by, uh, this is the filter. Um, I can change the metric from here, plus maybe sum of amount. And there you go, as you can see, I am continually exploring on my mobile device without the need to go back to my laptop or go uh, back and ask folks to change some of the charts. And this is again the power of self-exploration. I want to show you one more thing. Um, if you notice the opportunity name, now I can't see all of it, but this is the result of the actions enabled on a data set. So I can actually tap on opportunity and you will see this button right here says open. 
Now this button will actually take me directly because I enabled the action on the opportunity name, uh, on the opportunity name to go and open opportunity name directly. It, if I click on open, it will take me to the record um, um, in question. And let me just expand this a little bit. Again, tap on opportunity name, selecting it. And there you go. This is the action right uh, here. Or I can directly to click on uh, tap on open. And it will go and open my Salesforce app and try to open the record. Now, I'm not logged into Salesforce, so I need to log in. But that is absolutely bringing actions also on mobile to directly open the link, direct link, take that action that is available on that field. Um, just to let you know, actions is actually allows you to take a snapshot or to share this and post it directly. For example, you can say share a snapshot. You can actually directly post it in Salesforce. You can add some of your own uh, text editing. Check this, for example. And you can directly post it again in Salesforce. And that is, again, very powerful. So I can say add Ziad, for example. Check this. And there you go. This will also appear on my chatter. So again, very powerful. I encourage you to take a look at the mobile app. It's definitely a powerful way to explore, especially in, in an era where all of us is pretty much most of the time are mobile. And one more feature to point out to you, we did have the pilot feature for data sets um, uh, offline. So you, you, you can actually have an offline mode where you have the data sets and you can run dashboards in an offline mode. That's pretty much it for layouts.